the BMW IBSF 2017 Women's Skeleton World Championships is just a couple of minutes away. Good morning, welcome back to sunny Koenigsee in Bavaria, where we are going for our fourth and final slide to decide the medals in the 2017 BMW World Championships. Hello everybody, I'm Martin Haven. Sitting with me trackside, the 2010 Winter Olympic Skeleton Champion, Amy Williams. And Amy, what a race we got in prospect. Yes, so here's Lizzie. She has got the fastest start of the top three medal positions. She had a wicked run down best run of the race so far and so at the moment she is only 24 hundredths away from that gold medal position i think she can creep up if she holds it together this is tina herman who is in second place at the moment only 15 hundredths behind gold and she was last year's world champion she knows this track well can she maintain her calmness uh, and fight and push a little harder. And then Jacqueline Lowlin, who I actually thought was gonna go down in a much quicker run. She is in first place, but she's only got 1500s to play with. Now she won this event three weeks ago and is the World Cup contender. I think the medals are all to play for and we could see a few little switches. Yes, 2400s of a second. In theory, it should be too much, but nothing is too much perhaps on this track it's been fast it's been slide and slippery this morning but the top three are definitely all up for grabs those three medals and further back as well lots of little battles a couple of hundreds here a couple of hundreds there can see sliders move up or move down the order after the third heat 2400s cover the top three it seems certain that our medalists will come from there but behind them it was all about getting into the top 20 because that's the final run. The fastest 20, so for Takako Gucci of Japan, Japan, Great Britain's Donna Crichton and the rest of them, including 2006 Olympic champion Maya Pedersen. They're now on the sidelines. They join the fans trackside here in Bavaria on this stunning Saturday morning to see the final 20 sliders. Last preparations, you're not allowed to change the runners themselves. You can change exactly how much the contact patch on the curve runner is on the ice. You see Tina Herman just checking for scratches. This Bavace there had a disappointing run in the third heat. And Jacqueline Lerling holding on in front. Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands and uh, Belgium's Kim Milmans and Lizzie Arnold as well, the Olympic champion. Everybody making final checks to make sure that everything is exactly how they want it. And they will adjust the setup, Amy Williams, to suit today's conditions. They'll have gone with what they thought they were going to find. Now they adjust it to what they have discovered. Yeah, they're just in part for May. They have just a few uh, moments to, uh, to alter their settings on that sled. And it's a really vital thing to get right. We go 20 to 1 from Russia's Renata Kutsina to our leader Jacqueline Lerling in the fourth and final heat. First of the final 20 sleds on ice, the 2017 Women's Skeleton World Championships in Koenigsegg, Bavaria. It's the silver medalist in the Junior Worlds, Renata Kutsina. Her teammate who won the Junior World Championship, Yulia Kanakina, had two horrible runs didn't make the top 20. Amy Williams, what's, what's she got to do on this Koenigsegg track to get the best out of the sled? Yeah, so the start here is very short and then it drops away very quickly. So you've got to be powerful, get on that sled quickly, get into the perfect position. You've then got these four S-bends. They go straight into each other. It's a big swooping uh, four corners. You then come out into this very wonky straight. You've got to just clip just at the right space try not to skid and then you're into this big 360 chrysal turn trying to steer those oscillations so you don't ideally try and hit out down into that camber a uh, little kind of crazy bit into the big corners at the bottom where you really need all the speed that you can get the exit of chrysal is absolutely vital here to carry on the speed into these bottom corners and get a good time across that finish line well, that 53, 27, 3 hundredths of a second better than her first heat. Because the sliders outside the top 20 don't get a fourth run, you can't drop out of 20th place. Renata Kutsina has our race lead at the moment. And don't forget, it is a four-heat race. The second heat yesterday was snowed off, but uh, 
we still have two heats to get through today. So a lovely exit there from S4. However, she has a little crossover because she wants to hit at that certain point. Bit of a hard hit there out of that Chrysler, which is just skidding her across. And she's having to fight a little bit through those really crazy cambers. You want to be nailing those cambers and going straight as a rocket through there. You saw her runners leaving marks on the ice. Renata Kutsina, Kutsina though, is our race leader. Annie O'Shea, 21st overnight, and came out fighting this morning to push herself up into 19th place. Now, she's definitely got potential to move up. If she can get the exit of the cries all right she could pick off another couple of positions maybe yeah annie's not very good friends with this track she has a great start but for seven eight years she has really struggled with the cries on here and i think once it becomes this mental block it's very hard to psychologically get over that let's see how she comes out of this s4 little tiny scrape having to just work with her feet not to skid around she really needs to control this second pressure in the Chrysler so that she hasn't got too much to have to fight at the end. In the green, ahead of Renata Kutsina, and that's possibly her best exit from the Chrysler so far. 5,200's up. Yep, she, she should well add then. to that. 110.4, 68.6 miles an hour, half a mile an hour quicker than the Russian, and you see the gap goes out another tenth. There'll be another tenth by the line. So 52.95. Well, her first slide this morning was a 52.81, so it wasn't quite as quick, but that will mean that she does not lose a place and might move up. Yeah, she'll be happy to at least maintain that place. She was 21st on the first run today, 15th uh, yesterday, and then 15th on the first uh, that run this morning. So she is relieved. It's disappointing world champs for her because we do expect her to be a little up. That is probably the best exit Chrysler she has done so far this week. So yes, it's not perfect, but for her, at least she, she managed to get out there without too much of a hit. And O'Shea of the USA moves into the leader's box, 18 sleds to come. Struggling this season with a back injury, has taken the speed out of the start for former junior world champion, bobsled break woman, Marina Gilardoni. She's one of the most electrifying starters on tour, but today and yesterday, she's been 15th out of the field, so way down in the midfield. And of course, having a back problem you see, she's not as flexible and relaxed on the sled either. No, I can uh, sympathise with that. Having most of my career had uh, back disc problems and still do. We are normally used to seeing her with a much faster start. She was third here in the last uh, event last year, um, but she wasn't here a few weeks ago because of these injuries. So she hasn't had quite the same amount of practice time as some of the other athletes. She was only three hundredths of a second in front of Annie O'Shea and didn't start as quickly as the American girl. So at the top of the track, she's behind. The gap is only six hundredths. Fractionally better speed than Annie, but a bit of a bigger hit. So she's still two hundredths behind and those extra little bumps will take speed out as well. Yeah, you can just see her getting sort of whipped around that uh, camber there. I mean, it's normally her start time that does bring her down quicker. She is still in the green light there, which is what we want to see. And at the line, six hundredths of a second, a 52.92 slide, three hundredths of a second faster than Annie on that run. So she doubles the advantage from three to six hundredths and stays in the lead. And again, six hundredths of a second is about uh, six feet up the track. So it's a very close run after getting off uh, three miles of ice. Yeah, there's the replay of her coming out of Chrysler. Does take a hit, but manages to maintain that position. But you can see her legs apart, so she's having to fight to get through that camber. Now, the result for a lot of these athletes is so important because Olympic funding in this next year, being able to get whatever uh, position that they need to qualify, you know, so that they can actually train more full time and not have to go back to work. It's, you know, it's a really important um, event for a lot of these athletes. Jacqueline Narakot from Brisbane and uh, making the trip to Koenigsegg in Bavaria. Her mum and dad here to watch in the World Championships. Just a quick shout out to our friend Charlie Booker watching back home. We know that you will be watching and enjoying these girls in action as always. 
Yeah, we know quite a few of the Aussies are watching at home from uh, Michelle Steele, who's an ex-skeleton slider. She was watching yesterday. Um, sure she will be as well this evening. Well, Jacqueline with a few hundreds in hand as well. She was four tenths in front of the battle between Marina Gilardoni and Annie O'Shea. So her eyes will be on trying to catch Savannah Grable of the USA, who was only three hundreds in front of her after the first heat. Yeah, she was 13th in this event uh, a few weeks ago. So we know that she can do well, and she really wants to do well to be able to make sure she gets onto that Olympic funding. We heard scratching behind the shades, but she got a good exit into the labyrinth. And this is like a nice looking run, four tenths up on Marina Gilardoni. Out to six tenths is a very good run. The best so far, I think, from Jacqueline Maricott. Across the line, 52-53. She did a 52-99 on the previous one. So that is 46 hundreds better. There you go, Jackie. That's what produces results. She has got to be really, really happy with that. To put down your fastest run on the very last one, you know, all comes down to results. I'm sure that does give her her funding that she needs. So, yeah, she is going to be one happy girl standing on that podium. There's her just loading onto the sled, getting into position as quick as possible and looking into the first corner. That's a really big improvement by her and, her, and I think she is going to be one of those athletes that, you know, we do see creep on up through the uh, rankings. Nearly half a second quicker on your final run. That's the way to leave it. Savannah Grable of the USA, third of three American sliders in the team. The rookie making her first world championship start, just 28 years old. Twin brother also slides skeleton and her dog, Kaya, is on her sled. Savannah came from field hockey. Actually tried out for US bobsled before she chose skeleton. Yeah, I mean, she was 14th in the first run, 19th in the, in the third. So she's really going to want to kind of move on up. She obviously, with all the snow that went on yesterday, she is looking to, uh, to better herself. Great line there going into that first corner. She's an athlete that actually decides to slide with her feet that little bit apart. It's all about aerodynamics, uh, this sport. But for some athletes, if you've been in a wind tunnel, actually you can be a little bit quicker with your feet apart as opposed to putting them together. But she does use them quite a lot for her steering. Well, she was only 300 in front of Jacqueline Narricutt from the first heat. She's 800 behind, very wavy in the Chrysler. Gets away with the exit and she's 300 in front. That's her first, or well, that is her uh, previous advantage over Jackie Narricott. So this is another good run from Grable. Just a little tap there. She just cut the bottom of that corner up. She's actually an ex-field hockey player. And yes, there she is. Comes over in first place. That was a good clean run from her. She, she actually got out of that Chrysler way better than I was expecting her to. She really controlled that well. Exactly the same downtime on this run as Jacqueline Narricott of Australia. So the 300 she had in her pocket from the previous two is what kept her in front. There you are, coming out of the S-Benz there. She did get 7400s better on that run. So although she didn't have the best straight going on down there, she actually really controlled her Chrysler and had a really big improvement over that second run. There, she's just sort of cutting off that edge of the corner and has just got the wrong angle, which is why she's aiming towards that uh, wall. Savannah Graybill, your race leader after the first five sleds out, out of our final run. Netherlands, Kimberly Boss at the top of the track. And Kimberly, one of the younger sliders in the field, 23 years old. Bronze in the 2012 Youth Olympic Games as a bobsledder before she converted to skeleton. Eighth in last year's World Championships. Yeah, using that other um, spur there. So you can see the runners actually at the start of a race sit into a groove and then you can see that they run out. You've got to lie on that sled before it runs out. She was th uh, three tenths in front of Savannah Grable from the first heat, adding to that advantage at the top of the track, but a little skiddy. 
I think a lot of these girls, if they're not very experienced on the big world stage in world championships, can be quite nervous. And, you know, it can sometimes take that first run just to get the nerves out and to settle onto the sled. And it's obviously the more experienced ones who nail it from very beginning and pop down those consistent runs that uh, obviously are the top of the leaderboard. Really good speed at the bottom, and that will keep her in her position. Four tenths in front of Savannah Graybill. There is your 2008 world champion, Kristen Bromley, who supplies the sled to a lot of the members of the field. Yeah, that run was 14 hundredths quicker than her one this morning. So 40, I'm 40 hundredths. Hang on. I'm losing the plot here. Uh, <laughs> she has improved on that run from this morning. And whether or not, I mean, the ice looks really beautiful. Some of these girls did have a bad first run. However, is the ice also a little bit quicker? We'll have to wait until the next uh, girls. This is the straightaway between uh, USA and then Kimberly there. And you can just see the difference with how they're using their feet. Slight skids there between, but otherwise they're quite comparable. Kimberly, Kimberly. So Kimberly Boss in the leader's box for the Netherlands. 14 sleds still to come. Martin Haven and 2010 Olympic champion Amy Williams trackside for the final runs of the Women's Skeleton World Championships. Kendall Wessenberg of the USA, 11th in the first heat, only 16th quickest in the second, in the third heat rather, the first this morning. And she has slipped back down to 14th place. She has 11 hundredths of a second in hand over current leader Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands. So she got a silver medal in San Moritz this year, which is so far her only World Cup medal. But she obviously has had that little taste of standing on a podium. You can see the ice there looking lovely. You can see the shine on the ice there as it hits. Just taking a little hit there out of the S-Bends. So she needs to really have a great straight here into the inner corner before uh, this 360 Chrysal. So her using her toe to try and correct the climb up the Chrysler there from Modesto, California. Her second season on the World Cup Tour, her second World Championship. She was 16th last year, currently lying in 14th and still ahead of Kimberly Boss. 1100s up for the first heat, so she will hold her lead at the line. She does, but not by quite as much. 52-37 slide keeps her in at least 14th place. All of these sleds at the moment are actually getting faster. That was 5,900 quicker. And I think actually this track has really held up and the prep that they do in between runs, maybe the temperature and ice is slightly different. And I actually think we might have a faster track now this afternoon than what the girls had, uh, well, still this morning, but yeah. from what they had in the earlier run early this morning. Yeah, definitely 8.30, everything was still frosty. Car windscreens were still frosted, so the track looks like it's a lot quicker now. There's your leader, Kem, uh, Kendall Wessenberg. So big crowd down in the sunshine at the bottom of the track and in the shadows at the top. Maria Oliver of Russia, 13th after the first heat this morning. So we have a four heat format in the World Championships. Second heat yesterday was snowed out. And so we had one heat yesterday, one heat so far today. This is the deciding run. She's the second placed of four Russian athletes in the field. Yeah, she's one of our most experienced Russian athletes. Has a solid start. And she did win in Altenburg, actually, in 2015. So she has had success on some German uh, tracks. She has a great start, looks good on the sled, and then normally just starts to slightly lose it. They haven't managed. All the Russian girls seem to lose a lot of time in the bottom part of the track. Well, she's produced her best start of the competition. That's about the fourth fastest start we've seen so far in the World Championships. Gets a lot of pressure in the second rise on the Chrysal. Just skates past the walls. Yeah, she controlled it well there. Using her feet, you can see, um, on the ice and dragging them and, and steering with her toes. She's in trouble. She's going behind. Kendall Wessenberg will stay in the leader's box. She was 
1900s up and she comes down four tenths of a second slower to Kendall to lose by 1700. So Kendall Wessenberg moves up a spot. Maria Oliver, and again, there's the consistency that evades her so frequently. One or two good runs, but never enough to really hit the heights that the odd run shows us. Now, I mean, she was losing time after the cries, or all the Russian girls have done that so far. They're not having the best straights, to be honest, and that's the speed that takes them into Kreisel. She did have a clean exit, but if you've already lost the speed before you've gone in, then, you know, you're never going to quite make it up. See, there she is on the exit. Not too bad, com said, considering some of the girls, but you can still see she is still fighting because her shoulders have come off the sled and her head is still really high. The good, fast girls that we'll see at the very end will have lower heads. Canada's Jane Channel lies in 12th place after three heats of the Women's World Championships. Yesterday in the snow race, she was the leader until it got cancelled after 22 sliders. But now she's got a chance to try and move up. She's ahead of Kendall Wessenberg of the USA by nearly three tenths of a second. Go, 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 and another go, go, tenth go, go, quicker go, 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 in her run will move her up the order as well. Yeah, she's a very fast starter. She's always had the top three starts. There you are, 4.97. Very good start. She was actually fourth in the World Championships in 2015. So she has been up there when the track obviously suits her. End of her second full World Cup season. As you said, she did the Worlds in Winterberg 2015. Jane has got great speed, opening up the margin to 4,700s now. Fastest. Second fastest speed we've seen into the Chrysal. Yeah, good exit there. Just a tiny little tap, but it didn't uh, alter where the sled went. No skids or anything. She's got really good speed there, coming down into the bottom section. Well, she's holding her lead over Kendall Wessenberg, but losing time to the line, down to 2200s. A 52-43 slide. Kendall uh, was faster, Kimberly Boss. Fastest of all so far with a 52-33 slide. So Kimberly Boss in third, Kendall Wessenberg in second, and Jane Channel, your race leader. You can see her beautiful hel helmet reflecting her uh, Japanese-Canadian parentage. Yeah, so there's her coming out of the Chrysler, we'll just clips it on both of those corners, which does affect then that little bit of speed. She has an awesome start time, a 4.97, so you would, and she would be hoping still to be getting down in a slightly better position. We've got Laura Dees coming up next. Great Britain's Laura Dees lying in 11th position after our first three heats, 2,500s ahead of Jane Channel of Canada. And her target will be former Olympic bronze medalist Elena Nikitina of Russia, who lies in 10th position. She also has a very good start time, a 4.95. That's the fastest she has so far pushed. She had a better run down. She's been improving every single run she's done here. She really wants to get into that top 10 and move on up a few more positions. Well, let's hope that the nerves aren't going to get to her. She had 10th fastest run in the third heat, that first this morning. Her family and friends are down at the bottom of the track waiting to welcome her. 109.7, 68.2 fastest we've seen in the Chrysler gets a decent enough exit 4300s up can this be enough to move her into a top 10 finish in the world championships and here her chin of a helmet dragging on the ice she's not steering hard she's got good speed second fastest across the line 52 11 fastest slide of the second heat so far and a 52-11 in the first run this morning would have been the fourth fastest run. Yeah, that was a great run by Laura. And again, she's coming way up past the finish area, just allowing that hill to take the momentum out of the sled rather than putting her hands or her feet down and risking hurting them trying to stop herself. But that was a really strong run. That should give her a shot at a top 10 finish. 
Yeah, I don't think many people will be pushing as fast as her. She still does take quite a considerable knock there out of the Kreisel, but luckily for her, she still had a great amount of speed and corrected really, really well. Back into that perfect body position. Well, there you can see the women's trophy sitting on the wall as everybody comes in. There's the Dees family. Laura Dees rhymes with peace. She leads from Jane Channel and Kendall Wessenberg. Ten down, ten to go in the final of the Women's Skeleton World Championships. Well, Amy, Laura has managed overnight to really relax into this you know she had a 10th fastest run in the first heat to move up a couple of spots really good looking run there and you know the smile is back on her face i think that's the day she needed right yeah i think for laura it takes her a little while to get into it she really wants it and yet can't quite nail it on run one when it really really matters and like we keep saying it's the consistency it's great that she kind of settles into it and everyone she's getting quicker but obviously you want to do that from you know straight away and she has a great great start on her she just needs to piece it all together so i think we'll see, see her standing on that spot for maybe another few sliders because that was an exceptionally fast run let's see what happens for her i hope she stays there well how does this track at koenigsee rate in your kind of list of favorites did was it one that you gelled with was it one that was always always a problem i think for me it was kind of like down the middle somewhere it's the chrysal that causes so many problems and that kind of very strange straight you've got to take the little tiny clip at exactly the right place to be able to literally nail it through and continue with all the all the speed going through so what was your favorite track when you were sliding there oh my like somehow it was the big g-force pressure tracks that i always competed very best at and never really liked them i think lake placid was probably one of the the funnest ones to be able to do you've got sam moritz that uh, has the horseshoe corner that i always crashed out of but no <laughs> there's always a fair and you know how can i not like whistler <laughs> yes exactly how can you not like whistler exactly right so big crowd here and we have 10 sleds to go to decide the medals laura dees of great britain our race leader and a chance that we will have a Britain in the medals at the end of the day. Beautiful Berchtesgaden Garden Bavaria, the 2017 BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Championships. Final 10 athletes. This is our Olympic bronze medalist from Sochi, Yelena Nikitina electrifying starter but she can't oh fantastic 483 300s inside her own start record here she can't unlock the secrets of carrying the speed down the track amy williams yeah i mean that is a phenomenal start just breaking her own track record on that push but she has to be able to actually control the sled and steer it and that's her inexperience you can see her head is quite high there she's a very petite little girl on the sled but she hasn't quite got the experience and knowledge of actually driving a very good exit there coming out of the Chrysal she's 3100 up can she hold it together down this bottom part of the track with that phenomenal start time this might be the one start where she does it 3800s down to 22 and by 800s she's going to break Laura D's heart 52 21 it was a tenth of a second slower than Laura D's despite that start being 1200s quicker than Laura but 200s keeps her in a guaranteed top 10 finish and that was the relief that she carried some of that down to the line and didn't slip behind yeah that actually was her best run so far her fastest run but let's take a look at this start absolutely phenomenal power and speed she gets on the sled very quickly straight into that position with her head low she controlled it well and i think for her Actually, that start time did get her all the way to the bottom because I was expecting Laura to stand on that finished podium a little bit longer. Elena Nikitina of Russia leads from Laura Dees and Jane Channel. Silver medalist last year in the World Championships on her home track in Innsbruck. Janine Flock, one of the most experienced sliders now, 28-year-old from Hull in Tyrol, a former snowboarder when she was a teenager. And it was... 
the Austrian bobsled coach Manfred Meyer, who lives on the same street as her family, who persuaded her dad that he ought to take his teenage daughter to the ice track and see if she had what it took. Well, turns out she did. Yeah, so Janine here is actually ranked third in the World Cup ranking points. So we were surprised to see her back in this position, actually. And I think she's probably surprised herself. But she's been plagued with the horrors of this track, with that uh, 360 Kreisel. She's been struggling with it all week. And you can see there, she's even taken a few knocks down that straight. And a lot of times it's because you're already preempting the fate of the next corner. Well, she's already dropping three spots, so she's going to go behind Elena Nikitina and Laura Dees at this rate. So the British girl is going to move up into the top ten. This is not the run that Janine Flock wanted. She's going to lose three places and will finish possibly outside the top ten. There's her coach, Mickey Grunberger, your old coach as well. And uh, a little bit disappointed with that. Janine knows there's more in her, but it's just not coming here in Koenigsegg. No, that means Laura Dees uh, moves up a spot, so to speak, because uh, Janine didn't manage to hold on to her position. She is going to be very, very disappointed with that. Well, the last three sleds, Laura Dees, 52-11, Elena Nikitina, 52-21, Janine Flock, 52-45. Yeah, I mean, she has. I have seen her improve on this exit of Chrysler, but you still don't want to be taking a knock that hard. Elena Nikitina, the race leader. Eight sleds to go in the Women's Skeleton World Championships. Russia's Elena Nikitina has moved up a spot, is the leader. Lelda Prejelena of Latvia next up. Two seventh place runs in the two heats that have kick, uh, have counted so far. And the Latvian girl confirming her improvement. Last year in the World Championships in Innsbruck, she was 12th. So the 2016 Junior World Champion is definitely stepping up a gear this year. Great form on the sled there with her feet together, the shoulders are low. Well, her teammate Martis Dukurs of Latvia leads the men's competition after the first day by 74 hundredths of a second. And everything that the Dukurs family knows is gradually being trickled down into Prejelena. She's got great tutors. She does, and she was fifth in the uh, World Cup event a few weeks ago. Was in third place, but, you know, shifted on down. So she has got the experience here. She does know this track well, and she's sliding in a very confident way throughout these corners. She was she losing. There, got the best speed. Yeah. Was losing time to Nikki Turner, but she has gone from 1,200s behind, and she will take the lead by 1,700s, 52-27. While well, Elena Nikita and applauds that performance from Lauda Prejelena. Lauda will get guarantee yourself no worse than a top eight finish, her best world championship result at the senior level. And look how happy she is when you see that one digit being held up as you come across the line, Amy, you know you've done a good job. Yeah, she nailed that. She is uh, very happy. You always want to see that number one, knowing that you've maintained your position. That is what gave her the best speed at the bottom. That is so far the best exit of Kreisel. Absolutely textbook. Not having to work hard at all, just letting the sled flow. <sighs> Breathing a sigh of relief, panting heavily after that big start, a 5.04, another great start. Yeah, uh, Thomas Bart, the president of the IOC, with Ivo Ferriani there in the hat, the uh, president of the IBSF. So the head of the Olympic organization here on a beautiful sunny day to watch this competition. Seven to go here in Koenigsegg, including rookie Mimi Reneva. What a season this woman has had blew the field away, crushed them in San Moritz, the most historic of all tracks, winning by two seconds, and in her first World Championships, aiming for a top six result. Yeah, we expect a very fast start out of her. She's one of the more athletic girls. 4.98 start that she popped down there, which is one of the best so far. She's always in the top half dozen. She's got great sliding licks as well. Good exit from S4 onto the straight. 2100 up on Lelda Prejelena. 
Little skid coming into the Yenna curve that leads into the Kreisel. Yeah, she hasn't got the same speed, unfortunately, going in. Just takes a tiny little clip. She's got to hold it together now. She wants to hold on to that first place. Don't forget, Lelda came from behind, from here to the line on the uphill section. So, Bregelena had good speed. Amini Reneva just slips a fraction behind. And second place at the line, while well, still a top eight result in her first ever World Championships, Mimi Reneva has had a really strong season. A 28-year-old born in Bulgaria, family went to Canada when she was 10. She started in rugby and then in 2010 watched you, Amy Williams, win the Olympic gold medal. And she went, that, that's what I want to do. Yeah, I mean, there she came down in the ninth fastest. So she can see she's not quite happy. She had no speed going into the Chrysler. And this is probably because of the bad straightaway. She's drifting. She's having to fight. And therefore, what happens in the Chrysler is quite different. And she's not able to control it on the way out. Well, still, she gets a hug from teammate Jane Channel. And it is Lelda Prejelena who leads with six to go. Kim Marmons of Belgium, sixth position after three heats of the Women's World Championships, finished in 14th place last year. There's your leader, Lauda Prechelena. Marmons went to school here in Berchtesgaden with Tina Herman. She started sliding for Germany when she was 13, and then when she grew to be a senior, started sliding for Belgium. And the little Belgian, as she calls herself, is an absolute flyer on this track. She knows all the German secrets. Yeah, and you can actually see that when she's sliding. She's had her first, fastest push so far of this competition. She actually almost looks like a German when she's on the sled. So you can see she knows the little secrets. Can she do it though? Can the experience? She's got really decent speed there going into Kreisel. So will she come out well? Yep, really good exit of the Kreisel and she's carrying it through. And she's doubled her advantage. 68.5 miles an hour, fastest of all, matching the fastest speed of Lelda Prechelena. She's going to roar away from the Latvian girl of the line. Four tenths up, the gap is growing. What a run, 52.07. That is the fifth fastest slide of the day. Only far, only the top four in the first heat have gone below a 52-second slide. And Amy, you feel it in the body, don't you, when it's really flowed, and look at her. Yeah, that is a personal best from her. That is the, you know, the, the run of her life so far and of her career, 52.07. So that's the fastest one so far that we've had in this last run. And look at her. I think she is definitely one to look out for in the future. I mean, she is ecstatic. That is the best result that she has had so far in her career. There you are, coming out of Exit Chrysler. You can see already her head is down, she's relaxed and she doesn't have to fight. Her shoulders are there and she can just let it flow all the way down, which gives her that massive speed at the bottom. <laughs> Trickles down the middle, there's her mum. The head of the Belgian Federation is down there on the finish deck as well with her. So Kim Marmons has the lead, five to go. Elizabeth Arche of Canada, fifth into the final heat here now. Is there any chance that she can move up into fourth place ahead of Germany's Anna Fernstedt? She needs the run of her week next. Yeah, there you are. A good push from her, faster so far in this competition, but she didn't have the best uh, third slide earlier today. So she really needs to move on up. Third fastest overnight, and as you say, only six quickest on the first run down the track. A long skid off S4. That's going to take speed out of the sled. Yeah, she's really going to have to find the speed out of here and have the perfect exit of Chrysler if she wants to move up any places. Equal fastest in the Chrysler, but it's all undone as she drills the wall on the exit. Yeah, that wasn't what she wanted. She's going to be kicking herself because of that. And because we can see she's gone into the red and she hasn't got the speed. So unfortunately, I think we're going to see her drop. And I think Kim is going to stay on that first spot. Elizabeth Arche second, Kim Marmons leads with four to go. Wow, the Belgian girl who was in 14th place in last year's World Championships is leading with four to go. 
Yeah, the only way you're going to move on up is getting out of that chrysal and bring in the speed with you. You have to have the most perfect exit if you want to be within these medals. Dad Jeff there with Elizabeth Arche. You'll see her mum, Rita, in the white knitted hat at the bottom. Yeah, that cries or exit there is now going to plague her. She unfortunately isn't going to come on through. That's a one big hit. You can see her whole body lifting up. Well, she'll be bruised and aching tomorrow, but it's a top six finish for Elizabeth Farche, guaranteed. Kimarman's leads from Elizabeth Farche and Lelda Pregelena. We have four sleds to go. Four sleds, three Germans left in the Women's World Championships. Three weeks ago, Germany swept the podium. Anna Fernstedt took the bronze. She is going to have to fight her way past Lizzie Arnold, the Olympic champion, to get a medal today. Yeah, she must have had, uh, you know, those kind of first heat nerves that just didn't allow her to have the best run. This is her first world championship, so it's kind of understandable you might have those extra nerves, but you've got to uh, get rid of them, forget about it, and treat it like any other race. 20-year-old former gymnast, she was born and bred in Prague, but grew up and went to school here in Berkshire, Scotland, where she now lives. So this is her home track of all the German girls. She and Kim Meilmans, the current leader, who also went to school here in Berkshire, Scotland. Beautiful exit there. She had a third place here a few weeks ago in the World Cup, and that was her first World Cup podium. Into the lead, she sneaks past at the bottom of the track, and that's the Berkshire, Scotland fit effects. She is in the lead with three to go. Coach Jens Muller delighted with that from Anna Fernstedt, but she's not yet got a hand on a medal. That was the best speed we've seen so far at the bottom of the track. That's where her strength is. So she's going to be incredibly happy with that. Has she done enough to stay in fourth place or actually move on up a little? We've got three sleds to go. That's how you exit Kreisel on this track. And that is the secrets of a German on a German track, having had hundreds of runs down here. Well, a huge smile from 20-year-old Anna Fernstadt. And there you can see the fan club in the corner. She's a big favorite with the Bavarian crowd here. Bronze medalist three weeks ago in the World Cup. Three to go in the Women's Skeleton World Championships. Olympic champion Lizzie Arnold drove herself into medal contention in the first heat today. She lies in third spot. 2400s cover the top three. The medals are all up for grabs. Here we go. I think Lizzie will give it all here. She's got the best start out of these top four girls. A lot quicker than the Germans. Let's see what she can do. Well, 503, 20 hundreds quicker than, and than Anna Fernstedt, who she was in ahead of by uh, 65 hundreds anyway. So Lizzie's focus is all about the top step of the podium. Yeah, she's got to stay calm, remain still on the sled, which is a massive strength of Lizzie. She's got a perfect straight there, coming into Kreisel. And so far, she has always nailed this exit. She hasn't got quite as high a speed, but she's got a lot of time to play with. 6800s in hand over Anna Fernstedt. She will take a medal here. She's one mile an hour slower than the top speed at the bottom set by Fernstedt. So the gap will come down. She may not win this race, but she will take her world championship medal. A 5208 slide. Fernstedt was 400s of a second quicker, but Lizzie's cumulative time is what takes her onto the podium. Yeah, she has definitely bagged herself a medal from these World Championships. She is sat in third. She had the best start that she's done so far. She's going to be incredibly happy. We just now have to see how the next two Germans come, come down. So she did take a little bit of a hit there. That might have cost her that little moving on up to a silver or a gold, but you never know. Anything can happen on any one of these runs. And those two German girls are at the top of the track. Uh, trying to keep their nerves. Well, Lizzie Young is loving life to the full at the moment. Guarantees herself a world championship medal with two sleds to come. The world championship will be decided in the next four minutes. 
Germany's Tina Hermann wears the red vest of the defending world champion. Can she overhaul her teammate and arch rival Jacqueline Lurling to take gold? Can she hold off the charging Lizzie Arnold to hold silver? We've got 52 seconds to find out. Yeah, she needs to hold it together. It's a crazy uh, place being up there, knowing that you're one of the last people at the top of the track and you have to hold your nerves together. It's a psychological game. Last year's World Cup champion with four wins and two silvers, only once out of the medals. This year, she's only once been in the medals in the World Cup, one win. Top speed in the Chrysler, 110.4, she's 109.8, she's a little behind, she's still got a slender advantage over Lizzie Arnold, avoids the wall, and that will help grow, it'll add another tenth to her advantage. She will stay in front of the British sled. Yeah, she had a little, oh, big, big speed there, 116, so that's the fastest so far. Stunning speed, and she goes 48 hundreds into the lead, a 51-69. That is the fastest run down the track in this Women's World Championships, and that is her bid to retain her World Championship. Yeah, I mean, she was only 700s ahead. And then look, where did she find all of that? For her, she is a speed demon at the bottom of this track. She didn't actually have the best straight, but she nailed the Chrysal and found all the speed in these bottom corners. She comes from a lot of a, a higher height there and just has that speed. I've got a funny feeling here. If Lolin uh, doesn't have nails this run, we could just see our world champion right there. Jacqueline Lurling set the track record in the team competition last Saturday. The ice was faster then, but she needs to find that speed again. She was fastest in the first heat, second fastest to Lizzie Arnold in the second heat. She's led from the start, but you can just see the nervous tension, that adrenaline pumping through her. She's trembling on the line. Can she focus and hold off the world champion to take her first World Championship gold medal. She needs to hold it together. She is our World Cup leader. She won gold here a few weeks ago. It's the mental game for her. Has she ever been in that position, being last off, knowing that she is now doing the run to get that gold medal? She is exactly like Marion Tees, one of the ex-German sliders. She doesn't have the best start. In fact, she's got quite a bad start, and yet she can drive. But like that, she just made a little tiny mistake. She needs to have a high speed here in the Chrysler, which she does, 111. Best so far going in. So can she hold it together on these bottom corners? She's been a youth Olympic gold medalist. She's been a junior world champion. She's 900 in front. She's nearly got the same speed. The gap opens up. Jacqueline Lurling from Winterberg in Germany is the 2017 skeleton world champion. She holds her nerve. She holds her line. And she extends her lead over teammate Tina Herman. Took another tenth out of Tina in that run to confirm that she is the golden girl of women's skeleton in Germany and the world champion. Yeah, absolutely incredible. These girls know where to find that speed. They're starting off in like 23rd, 22nd place. So, you know, for someone to win a world champs with a start time, you know, that slow is incredible. But that's the experience on these tracks. She even took a tap there out of that S4, but they go into that Chrysler with the highest speed and they take it out. And that is the magic of the Chrysler when you get it right. And look at that. That yeah. is your world champion. That is a happy mum. 2015 is the junior world champion. The unheard of Jacqueline Lurling got a free buy into the Worlds in Winterberg, her home track, and she took a silver medal. She was only just beaten. And Jacqueline Lurling is now the world champion. She beats Tina Herman, her teammate, and Lizzie Arnold takes the bronze medal for Great Britain. And Jacqueline Lurling all of that nervous tension released. 
Amy, you know what it's like to defend the lead in the fourth and final heat against world-class opposition. How do you relax on the sled? How can you do it? Well, that is the very, very tough thing. When you're up there in the start hut, all on your own, all your competitors have made it down, have got the positions, and you've got to go down and try and forget all of that. Forget you're going for a gold medal. And that is the really, really hard thing because there's so many thoughts in your head, and yet you have to empty your brain, lie on your sled, and just treat it like any other run. And that is the way to do it. 20 past 11 on a sunny Saturday morning, the day of days in her career so far for Jacqueline Lerling. She was the Youth Olympic champion in 2012 in Innsbruck in Austria. She took a silver medal on her debut in Winterberg two years ago, and now she is the world champion. So in fact, we need to get her in the photograph and have five women's Olympic champions in a shot later on this morning. She wins the world championship. Tina Herman, the silver, Lizzie Arnold, the bronze, Anna Fernstedt and Kim Milemans in fourth and fifth, and Elizabeth Varge rounds up the top half dozen. A lot of really feel-good stories to go in that top 20 and some big memories from this Women's Skeleton World Championships here in Koenigsee in Bavaria. What a stunning day for sliding. What a stunning day for BSK Winterberg and for Jacqueline Lerling. She marked herself out as a favorite last weekend by setting a new track record by almost two seconds. That remains in her pocket. She didn't need to go there in this World Championships, but she did need to hold it all together. And in the final run, she did exactly that. She showed them a clean set of heels. She is the 2017 Women's Skeleton World Champion. Well, there's your podium. The red jersey will go to Jacqueline Lerling. She's also our World Cup leader, and it seems unlikely that she'll be overhauled for the World Cup Crystal Globe. What a season for her. Well, my thanks to Amy Williams for all her thoughts. Thanks to you for being with us. Join us for the men's skeleton finale on Sunday morning. And don't forget, four-man bobsleigh also kicks off here in Koenigsee today. We'll see you then. Until then, bye for now.